loves and welcome back to the channel so good to have you here so in today's video we are going to be talking all about camera settings basically how to set your camera the right way in order to get the best possible video quality out of it now if you're someone who is currently struggling with setting your camera camera settings what to do what not to do or maybe you're kind of interested in knowing how I set my camera to get this quality and that's fine because in this video I'm gonna be taking you guys behind the scenes showing you guys how you know we work and also how you can work your camera by yourself so yeah if you are interested stick around with me definitely follow along and let's get right in to this video <music> Yeah, we're back again it's another tutorial and you guys know that I love kind of this instructional um, behind the scenes production type of videos yeah so in this video like I previously said in the beginning I'm gonna be showing you guys the behind the scenes taking you guys behind the scenes showing you guys exactly how I set my camera now do bear in mind that um, I do have at least two videos about camera settings I'm going to leave the links over here um, there's not much of a different just maybe one or two tweaks but I'm going to show you guys exactly what I have currently working for me and also how I have my camera set to get this quality that you're getting so if you're someone who is struggling I do want to say that um, my settings might not always apply to yours but however 70% of what I'm going to be talking about you can definitely apply to your own camera and start recording to get amazing quality so just for reference purposes I am using a Canon camera a Canon M6 Mark II just to be precise um, again this does have an impact on your camera settings menu and what I'm going to be showing you guys basically now with setting up your camera something that you do have to bear in mind again like I previously said are your camera the lens that you're using as well as your lighting these three things have a huge role and a huge impact on how you set your camera so in case you guys are new here I do have um, my studio set up currently up on my channel so you could check it out to kind of see what I have going on to be more specific I have another video focusing on my lighting setup how I set up my lighting what I use and how it's been set up I'll leave the link also here so you guys can watch it to kind of know what I'm working with determine what you're working with and then make some adjustments to work for you okay but what I want to do right now like I always do because again like I said this is not the first video that I'm recording and I'm gonna go behind the camera and show you guys exactly how I have my camera set up okay like so the first thing I change is the dial the movie mode now I always film in manual mode I've been filming in movie manual mode for the past <laughs> since I started out my YouTube channel you always want to film in manual so that way you optimize it the best way so now in terms of my movie quality this I feel like makes such a great difference in my quality as a whole I try as much as possible once in a while very often um, to shoot in 4k now 4k 30 frames per second this is the highest quality that my camera can produce if you want to get the best out of the, your camera you definitely want to be filming in either 4k or FHD now depending on the kind of content you're creating you can also tweak your frame rate now typically I film in either 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second now in terms of my Y balance um, I typically typically would either go three ways right the first way I would do is to use my auto white balance now because I'm filming with a mixture of my natural light and my studio light um, it's not always at the same temperature because most times the sunlight fluctuates becomes really bright it becomes really dark sometimes it's too warm at one point in time it's too you know cold or cool at the other point in time so having a fixed light balance doesn't really always work for you know my kind of lighting so again like I said you have to determine what your lighting situation is like and make some tweaks to suit that but because I'm kind of filming with this 
fluctuating temperatures i like to sometimes film um using my auto white balance um i always stick to the white priority the camera does a decent job Um, another way I go is by using my Kelvin. So most times I set my Kelvin manually on my camera. I'm going to show you guys how I do that right now as well. And the third way that I go is by doing a white balance correction using a white sheet of paper. I've been using this one. I just click on the picker tool and I click on this and it sets my white balance. It's easy. So when it comes to my autofocus, I like to stick to the tracking focus and also try as much as possible to enable my eye focus at the same time. I don't know if you guys can see this, but like it's tracking my eye. If I do this, you guys can see. So that way it's easier for me to create content whenever I'm filming and I can move left move right i'm sure that i know that um, my camera is going to be tracking me i also did amazing when it came to tracking autofocus i mean it's so easy nowadays to film content and you know show a product and have it focus on it right now amazing and take it out and have it focus back on my face because again like i said it's tracking me so i have my eye detection autofocus turned on as you guys could see right and in terms of my focus i use face tracking and tracking autofocus so now let's talk about the lighting triangle the iso the aperture as well as a shutter speed these three are determined by the camera you're using your lighting as well as your lens you always want your exposure compensation to at least be in the center um, so that way you know that it's evenly balanced so when it comes to my iso shutter speed as well as my aperture my aperture i most times keep it at 1.4 because that's my the aperture of my lens however because i'm using a viewtrox adapter this can actually go down to about 1.0 making it brighter making it more blurry but again i'm going to keep it at 1.4 or 1.6 depending on my mood in terms of my iso i always love sticking to the lowest iso now yours might differ depending on what your lighting is like now because i have a lot of lighting going on my lighting situation is amazing my lens as well is amazing it goes down to about 1.4 so i know that it's going to let in a lot of light um i don't need a lot of you know lighting to, to make it work um if you're filming with maybe an s-stop of let's say 3.5 or 4 you guys can see that um, I currently have my ISO at auto, right? But typically I would have my ISO at 100 like it is right now. So if I'm filming with um, an f-stop or filming with a lens that had an f-stop of 4.0, this is what it would look like filming my ISO at 100. So you can definitely adjust this. Let me take this up to maybe 800 and see what i'm working with and basically this is what i'm working with let me check my exposure compensation i always like checking this dial right here to make sure that it's centered that way i know that it's not too dark and it's not too bright if it's too dark it's going to be towards the left side if it's too bright it's going to be towards let me just take you guys let me put this at 100 so that you guys can see that it's going to be too dark right so it's going to be too dark and it's on the left the dial is on the left side so i'm going to bring it up to 800 just to balance it out a little bit and now we are perfectly balanced right so again depending on the lens and your lighting situation let me just adjust this this looks crazy um Depending on what your lens, depending on the lens you're using and what your lighting setup is like, that would affect what your, you know, settings would be like. Now, in terms of my shutter speed, um, typically with shutter speed, the rule for shutter speed is double your frame rate. Because I'm filming in 30 frames per second, my shutter speed ought to be at 60, and this is what 60 would look like. Definitely, I could then play around with my f-stop reduce my f-stop a bit to about 2.0 so that way it balances out right 
and 2.0 is still bright so i'm going to put it at 2.2 this is typically how i should have my camera set up however um i like shooting at a low f-stop so i can get more of that depth and blurry background so i'm going to take this back up to 1.4 and bring this up to about one one sixty. Amazing. Now this is going to be like a perfect setup for me. Now moving on to my picture style. This is another important setting that I have going on that also affects what my you know quality looks like. So when it comes to my picture style, I typically would film using standard mode. That's what I always use. I mean, you can play around with the, the picture styles to see what works for you. So in my standard mode, I go ahead to change the detailed settings, right? Um, for my sharpness, I have my sharpness at four. I have my contrast at the lowest, which is minus four right i have my saturation at minus two and i have my color tone at zero this is typically how i have my picture style set up now this is what i find works for me especially when it comes to post-production so that's typically all i do that's typically all i change i just change my contrast and my saturation and i leave everything as it is and this is what it looks like um with this i can add my color grade like this and this is what it will look like when i color grade it so you guys can see that i have room to to adjust and play with at the same time now if i was creating like a cinematic content and i wanted to add lots i would definitely flip over from standard mode to the cine style mode which is a custom picture style that i added onto my camera let me show you guys what that one looks like so this is what the cine style looks like with this and add lots to, lots to this picture um, profile and it will still look amazing but i don't do a lot of heavy post-production i just do the most basic i'm going to show you guys how i edit or color enhance my content on my videos in final cut pro i'll leave the link here if it's out already but i'll leave the link um in this video so you guys can see and check it out so um i think that's about it for my camera settings that's how i basically optimize my camera to get the best quality out of it this is what it looks like and that's what i have going on um next video i'll show you guys exactly how i color enhance my content that's about it for my camera settings i wanted it to be very brief straight to the point easy going and beginner friendly at the same time so if you have any questions feel free to let me know down in the comment section um let me know what your questions are what your struggles are before you leave make sure that you are subscribed to the channel do not go anywhere stick around with me stick around with us join the family by subscribing right here right now so yeah i'll leave i'll leave the playlist over here and over here as well so you can check it out i'll also leave the link to my subscribe watching here so you guys can subscribe it's free it's fun it's easy join the family and let's start creating amazing content Till we meet again, have an amazing day. Remember to stay fabulous.